1,500 Jews survived the Holocaust in the heart of Hitler's Third Reich. Five tell their remarkable stories. The Hidden Jews of Berlin. Jews in Nazi Germany is one of murder and terror on a vast scale. But there is another untold story of Jews who somehow escaped the Holocaust here in Berlin. They survived in the eye of the storm, the capital city of the Third Reich, throughout the war. They grabbed their fate in both hands with a mixture of courage, luck, and astonishing resourcefulness. They were the secret Jews of Berlin. Before the Nazis came to power, there had been 160,000 Jews living in Berlin. They were an integral part of this cosmopolitan city. By 1942, 500 a week were being picked up by the Gestapo and sent from here to their deaths at Auschwitz. This card was issued to me on the 26th of, 23rd of January 1939. Mm. I was 15 years old on this picture. Uh, here is my fingerprints. And the card, it's not marked uh, that uh, uh, you do or anything that the J denotes Jew. I was good looking, no? Good looking boy. On Christmas Eve 1942, two Gestapo knocked at the door here. They had come to pick up Larry and his mother. I made these two gentlemen sit down in a front room and I will bring them coffee and cake and I closed the door behind them. While the Gestapo had coffee and cake, Larry and his mother crept down the stairs. But when they reached the courtyard, they discovered they were locked in. There was no way out. My mother and I, we went up and knocked on the doors of about eight apartments each. It smelled beautifully from goose braten and some of the apartments they played Christmas music. But none of them was religious enough to take us in. They recognized us. We were part of this house. We were part of their lives. They could not, not recognize us. By now, the Gestapo had realized they had been fooled and were searching the building. All of a sudden, we heard a voice, Komm sie rauf, komm sie rauf. A little woman was calling us. She said, under the bed, under the bed. The Gestapo men went down without even coming into the apartment. And she came back, closed the door, said, my Biden Engel, my, my two angels, come out, come out. As dawn broke on Christmas morning, Larry and his mother crept out of the house and went into hiding in Berlin. We met in 1939, 
uh, or any Jews were not allowed to go public places. I was just, it was just after my 16th birthday. He hadn't had a 16th birthday yet. It was a small supper and uh, I was smitten. I was smitten with her. <laughs> Isn't that funny? And uh, I never ate radishes. I hated radishes. He was feeding me radishes. I devoured them. Jochen and Ellen grew up in Berlin and they still return for holidays here. As more and more of their Jewish friends were arrested by the Gestapo, the family had to decide what they should do. My parents thought that uh, we are getting relocated. At that time we didn't know for sure uh, any more than anybody else knew what's going on or what will be going on in the concentration camps. But we had uh, an inkling. Jochen's father was a doctor in a working class district of Berlin, so they had a willing network of helpers they could call on. When we went into hiding, it was Jochen and his father and mother and his sister Ruth, my mother, and myself. We disappeared January 9th, 43. Across the city, another family were facing life in hiding. The Reichs lived here in the heart of the Jewish area. Ismar's father was a wealthy trader who had died three years earlier at the hands of the Nazis. When Ismar went into hiding with his mother, he was just 16. We had, say, 15 to 20 hiding places, um, lasting between one day, two days, a week, various length of time, paying exorbitant amounts for those as, as an incentive to let us stay there. The Nazis had been rounding up Jews piecemeal, but now they decided to finish the job once and for all. On February the 27th, 1943, the SS arrested 10,000 Berlin Jews. From now on, to be Jewish was a death sentence. Als ich so gut schön war, schon lange her. Even half Jews like Ika were in danger. Verhaftet worden bin ich bei Siebets, es war am Sonntag, morgen. Ich glaube, das war der 27. Februar, ich weiß das aber nicht so genau. Und dann wurden wir auf Lastwagen geladen, verstaut. Dann hat man die Plane runtergemacht, da ist man mit uns losgefahren. Man hat uns aber nicht gesagt, wohin wir kommen. Man hat einfach losgefahren. Ike was taken with 2,000 other half-Jews and intermarried Jews to a temporary prison here at Rosenstrasse. Und da komme ich auf den Gang raus und gehe so ein paar Schritte. Da ist mein Vater, steht ja vor mir. Mein Vater schreit dann ganz laut Eka, abgekürzt Eka genannt immer. Ich habe ja nicht gewusst, dass er da ist und er hat nicht gewusst, dass ich drin bin. The non-Jewish wives and mothers of the prisoners held a vigil outside. Wie meine Mutti hat gerufen, wir möchten, ich möchte mein Mann und mein Kind wieder haben. Aber auf eine ganz ruhige Art, so dass die Polizei und die Stärkung keine Chance hat zu schießen. The protesters stayed here in the square for a week until their husbands and children were finally freed. This is the only example of successful civil protest against the Nazis.
No one knows exactly how many Jews escaped the final roundup, but it ran into thousands. The Gestapo started to hunt them down on the streets of Berlin. The secret Jews' ingenuity and quick-wittedness was tested to the limits as they ducked and danced one step ahead of the Gestapo. I always had to find something new. I wasn't like Anna Frank. I couldn't hide into a, into a cubby hole and have people bring me food. I had to make my own food. I had to get my own dollars and my own mark. I made my own life. I was never on anybody's list but my own. Only Gestapo had my name. Nobody else. The shortage of young men in general on the street was telling all over. It was a country of strictly women, old and young. The men were fighting, especially in 1943. Forget it. Most of the time I stayed overnight by girls where I paid with sex for food. I played in the pool room, I made money. I made good money playing cards and cheating. And we broke into stores. We robbed stores. Well, it looks the same way. Yeah. It looks the same way, except for the bicycles. Yeah. And you see, up there's Köhler's window, yeah, and, and yes, yeah. Mr. Köhler and Clara. It's really exactly Amazing. The Jochen Arndt was working in this factory by day and sleeping here at night. No one except Mr. Köhler, the owner, knew he was Jewish. Gradually, the rest of the family came to join him. Jochen would say to Mr. Köhler, I don't know what to do with my sister or my girlfriend and her mother. He would say, well, let them come here. If they catch me hiding you, they'll do me in, and if, I catch, if they catch me hiding six, the penalty is the same. And uh, they were very stoic about it. And, and here is the former entrance, entrance to the area shelter. shelter. Yeah. Keeping a group of seven Jews hidden even from the factory workers required iron discipline. The mothers got locked up in the cubicle in the back. Minus bathroom. There's just two bunks with straw. And they'll be quiet. Then no talking, my, no coughing. Uh, my mother-in-law no had a cough. So every once in a while, because the machines made noises too, but the cough you could still hear. Uh, so I, every once in a while I would go into that locked room. This was a, a secret room uh, off limits to the rest of the crew. And uh, I would cough so that she could clear her chest and throat, you know. I think they were very uncomfortable and not terribly happy, but they knew there's no choice. 